majority of the data warehouse projects, 70% of the overall project implementation time is taken up by ETL. And when we say 70% of the time, not everything is built within that 70% of the overall estimates. What is built? Whatever is given in the business requirement document or the system requirement document. So what should be covered within that 70%? Apart from whatever are your requirements, you should also consider the ETL framework setup, right? Now, what is an ETL framework? Immaterial of what kind of tool we use, Informatica, Data Stage, Talent, Pentaho, Kedis, any other ETL tools whichever are in the market, both commercial, open source, all of these have to track the runtime of the jobs which are running in the production or in any environment, right? Now, there are certain tools like Informatica's Proactive Monitoring which does this, but not everybody has it. Now, what are these requirements to track runtime and information about the exceptions or the audit controls? All those will be part of your retail framework, right? Now, usually these requirements are not drafted in any of your BRDs, FRDs or SRS documents, right? But based on the role which you're playing, it can be a developer, administrator, architect, or a data scientist, or anybody who's part of that application should consider implementing the framework, which is a non-functional requirement, to log the errors or get the record counts or see how many jobs are being successfully run, how many jobs need reconciliation, how many jobs run multiple times, what is the latest run of it, right? So the list goes on. Now that kind of data which is stored in the tables which is different from your business data is called the operational data. So the whole setup of when the job has been started and the file has been received or it is connected to a particular data source to pull the data, run through the whole life cycle of its transformation phases in different phases of the architecture, go to the data warehouse, raise an exception, get it back to the business, business reprocess it, and then go to the stage layer again, go through the calculations and aggregations, and then finally go to the data warehouse from where the reports will be generated, right? So this whole process, which we will see step by step in further lectures, can be considered as ETL framework, right? Now, there is no hard and fast rule that all of these included is a framework. Now, based on the requirement which you have and based on what the business wants to look at or based on what the production support team is requesting from you, the framework changes, right? So, what we are covering in this course is a high-level approach to implement an ETL framework in a typical data warehouse environment, right?